y'all welcome to another video I am Debbie today I'm going to be working on my converted cross stitch into a diamond painting and I have not stitched anything since we were last together on last Saturday I have completed 8412 stitches and out of 75,400 so um, 8,412 out of 75,400, and that is 11.16%. So moving along, moving along very slowly, I'm going to be working on these um, boxes up here. And so let's go ahead and get started. If you want to work on something, feel free to whip out your whip, whatever that may look like, and work alongside me. I will have to count some on this. If you're not familiar with a converted cross stitch, I am using Pattern Keeper. And so I have to place the drills or the diamonds onto a blank canvas. And I have to count because if I'm off on this, then the picture is not going to come together and it may look really strange. I have gotten some of the top done now. I will not be able to work on this again until Monday or so of next week. For me, this is Wednesday. I am leaving out tomorrow morning for a business trip. I'll be back late Sunday evening. And then from there, I will be home until Thursday morning of next week and then I'll be going to the Great Lakes retreat so I'm hoping that I'll have time between Tuesday and Wednesday of next week to be able to get another video out for you so you'll have that video for next week um, to watch on this I'm not a hundred percent though but I'm hoping that I'll be able to have time that is one, two, three, four. And I'm at a weird angle. Um, let's see. Where's that? Seven, seven, eight, nine, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, that's seven. Row seven. And that's going to be. I am really, really hoping that I can get another video out um, for you guys for the following Saturday. And if not, I'm sure that you guys will understand why I'm not able to do that. I really enjoy doing these and it also helps me to at least get something done, even though I don't work on it as much as I would like to. But even working on a couple of squares is better than nothing so i'm hoping that i'll be able to do that with you guys this is the wrong color i need 310 not 300 i'm glad i noticed that because that's a a brown versus a black so first and foremost before we get started how is everybody doing today i hope that everybody is doing well and that you are having or you had a really good week it's the time that you'll see this it will be your weekend i will be knee deep in judging for work so that's going to get keep me extremely busy over the weekend Let's see. And I am going to take a diamond painting with me. It's one that I'm over halfway finished with, and it's smaller. I would love to take my Summer with the Masters, but that is just too big to take. So I decided I'm not going to do that, but I've got another one, Dragon Lady by Lazy River, that I'm going to take because it is more than half complete. So I'm hoping I can possibly get that done that's probably wishful thinking but if not then i'm hoping that i can at least finish the majority of it so maybe i'll be able to um we shall see 
I'm really working at a strange angle, I'm trying not to get my arms in this too much. And it's hard for me to see the angle that I'm working on. This is such a large canvas, and there's not any real good way of doing this because normally for larger canvases that I work on, I can do it upside down or sideways. It doesn't matter, but there's no way I can do that on this one. So I'm kind of at the mercy of the actual, the actual area that I'm on. And so I guess that's okay. It will have to be. I may do some videoing while I am at the hotel this weekend. I'm going to take a small video arm that will work. It's not the greatest, but it's one that is easy to transport. And I might do something there if I have time or maybe I will start on a, my whip and tat that I normally record on Mondays. I can start on it there and then finish up Monday because next week I know is going to be crazy. I'm going to have to get everything done before I leave for work, um, before I leave to go to Ohio. I'm not taking my computer. This is the first time in 15 plus years I have actually taken a vacation and not having to take my computer. I am going to have to take my iPad because I do work part-time for another school that does not care. I don't get vacations there. Whereas I get vacations on my full-time job and I don't have to worry about that. But uh, unfortunately for the other school that I work for, they do not have time off. And in the evenings or maybe late afternoons, I can go up to my room and just look and see if there's anything that I need to do. There shouldn't really be anything, but I am not going to take my computer just so I can look at the school. I think I can get everything done on my iPad. I'm testing that out this weekend. I'm taking my computer because I am on work time. So I'm taking my computer, I'm taking my personal computer, I'm not taking my work computer, but I'm going to take that plus I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take my iPad and make sure that everything that I need to do on the other school, I can easily do it on my iPad. So it's kind of a test, I guess. I won't know how to feel not having a computer. I'll probably think I left it or something. So I'm so used to having to take it. I don't want to have to travel with it. It's a pain to have to travel, especially to fly with a computer. And I want a vacation for once that I can actually say I took a vacation. So hopefully everything will work out. I think it will. Let me get these started. What I'm going to do today, instead of going through comments, I'm going to do a Have You Ever, and thought so that would be really cool to answer some of these questions. I'll also put the link down if anyone is interested and they want to answer these questions. And I could even put the link in my Facebook group. So if you guys wanted to participate, you can do that also. And of course, you can participate underneath the description as well. I must have some plastic there. I do have just a little piece of plastic. No wonder I couldn't get anything to stick. There we go. The last two have just a tiny bit of plastic on here. I can just raise that up for now, I think. If I can keep that raised, we'll see. If not, I'll just have to remember. And that does not go there. That one goes, is that right? Let's see, that goes there. I think I'm off one already. One, two, no I'm not. I'm perfect, okay. Awesome. I thought I was already off one. I thought surely I'm not already off one. I just started. 
Well, that's good that I at least have some of the same colors. It's a really good start. Let me see. Okay. All right, so the first one says, never have I ever played hooky from school or work. And actually, I have. But the funny thing is, with school, I did a couple of times. Um, I just didn't feel like going to school. I was a really good student. And if something was going on that day that I really didn't want to deal with, then I would not go, which was only maybe three or four times the entire time that I was in school. And so my mom and I were always really close. And I told my mother everything. So I didn't, I guess you couldn't really say, I, mean, I did play hooky from school, but she knew about it. So I would tell her I'm not going to go to school and she'd be okay with it. She's like, as long as you don't have anything, you don't have any homework that, you know, you need to do, then you can stay home. So she knew. So it wasn't like I played hooky and then the school called my parents to tell them, you know, well, she wasn't there today. So yeah, I did. And then I also did in college, there were just some days I stayed up too late and I I lived on campus and our campus was at the time, they've really grown now, but it was a small private school, private Baptist um, college in Tennessee. And so I, there were just some days I would stay up too late and I would wake up and I thought, I just cannot do this. There's just no way. And of course the school that I went to at the time was a very small school. So Everybody knew everybody, and if you weren't there, they would say, oh, yeah, so-and-so, I saw her at the dorm, you know, or whatever. So you had to be really careful if you played hooky. So I only did that once or twice, and the main time I did it, which was really bad, we were required there to take some religion classes. It was just a requirement of the school, you know, which I guess makes sense since they were a religious school. And the two times that I remember that I woke up, it was a nine o'clock class. I thought there is no way. And we, everywhere we went, we could walk on campus. So it wasn't very far to walk or anything, but I thought I just can't do it. And I miss my religious classes. Of all the classes that I can say that I played hooky, it was the two Bible classes. And one was the Old Testament, one was the New Testament. And we were going to watch videos, and I thought, I can just watch this video, and I can do it through the school portal. I did not feel like getting up and going into class just to sit and watch a video. So I did play hooky, but I also spent the weekend watching the videos. So I did make everything up, and I don't think I ever played hooky from work. I'm sure I did. I had some really bad jobs. None of them were in education. They were all entry-level accounting jobs. And there was one that I absolutely hated working there. And so there were there's a couple of times that I just didn't feel like going in, but I don't ever remember not going in just because I did have an interview one time. And so that's when I had to go ahead and I did call in that I was going to be late, but I did go in. So I wouldn't say no on that one. That was kind of a maybe. Um, let's see. Another one they have, never have I ever stolen anything. And that is correct. I have never stolen anything. I am just too honest. If I were to steal something, then I would have felt really guilty, which I guess that's what you're supposed to do. I would have felt extremely guilty, and I would have turned myself in, whether it was a store or as honest as I am, I probably would go to the police station and say, you know, I stole some candy or whatever. But no, I never stole anything as a kid and certainly not as an adult. Um... 
let's see, where am I? I'm on... This one's getting a little crazy. It's all over the place. Okay. So there's that one. Nope, I haven't stolen anything. Even when I was a little kid, if I wanted something, I knew better than to just grab it. I would always ask my mom or my grandmother, who I was with quite often, if I could have something. And if they said no, I didn't try to just take it anyway. I knew either A, we couldn't afford it, or B, they didn't want me to have it for whatever reason it was. And so I just didn't. And as far as I know, my kids didn't, haven't stolen anything either. Um, let's see. Three, never have I ever missed a flight. And that's a good one considering that I am flying out soon. So I hope that I do not miss my flights next week. That would be really bad. Um, but I have missed a couple of flights and it was only because of the layover. I had a very short layover and, or we did when we were traveling. And unfortunately, the we had problems with the, the plane that we were supposed to take, and we were delayed, and so we missed our connecting flight. But when we got there, they said they knew that there was a lot of people that were on there that were supposed to go to the same connecting flight that we were going on. And so they were able to find another flight for us. So yeah, we did miss our flight. And that couldn't be helped. It wasn't because we were running late. We were always and still are very early, especially when we know we're flying out of Atlanta. It's like we make sure we're there with plenty of time to get through security because that can take a really long time in Atlanta. I'm sure it can everywhere else, but in Atlanta, it takes a really long time sometimes. Sometimes you can go through security in Atlanta, and you just whiz right through there, and then other times, it's like, goodness, am I ever going to get through here? It just depends. And Atlanta, I will say, has gotten better. It is the busiest airport it has been deemed the busiest airport in the country, and I can definitely believe it. But for the most part, they get you through there pretty quickly. TSA is pretty good about that, or they have when I have flown. I'll just say that. Where am I? Right here. This is very unusual for this particular section I'm working on, I have not been able so far to go through and have multiple colors, which has been really nice. This one goes here. I must have some plastic on this one too. So I got my plastic off. This one goes right there. This plastic is hard to see. Then I'm going to skip to and do one there. That goes right there. Oh, this is nice. I hope that all of these go this way. Because I've had so much confetti on this, it has just been absolutely unreal. Okay, so the next one is, never have I ever drunk dialed my ex. And that is true. I have never drunk dialed my ex. I really only have one ex um, because we dated all in high school and we um, got married right when I turned 20. So he's really the only one, the only ex that I have. And no, I have never drunk dialed him when we were together or when we were separated and divorced. So no. Um, let's see. Never have I ever rode a motorcycle. That is not true. I have ridden a motorcycle um, several times. I will say that I will never ever do it again. 
It is something that I have told both of my kids when they were younger, and I still tell them now. I think I've scared them enough to where they will not get on a motorcycle, especially my oldest. She's like, nope, I'm not going to do it, especially after the stories that you have told me. But we had a really good friend. He was my ex-husband's roommate in college for four years. And then he was very good friends with me. That's how I met him. We did a lot of things together at college. He um, lived a couple of hours away from the school, his family. And so we would go sometimes on the weekends and he was one of the most safest person or people that I have ever met. He also worked with their volunteer fire department and um, he helped out just a lot in his community. Well, he um, had gotten married. We were, he was in our wedding. We were in his and we um, became really good friends with his wife. And so they um, decided to go on a trip and we were supposed to go, but I had, of all things, a, um, a work assignment that was out of town. And so I could not go on that particular ride with them. We were going to, to go and have a two week ride. And it was going to be just the four of us. We had um, plans made and then something came up with work and I couldn't go because I was doing audit at that time. And so an, an audit came up with work and they told me I couldn't take off. And so I told my ex-husband, I said, go ahead and go. You've had this planned and, you know, they are going to be really disappointed because they have been looking forward to it. And why don't you just go ahead and go, and then I'll just, you know, stay home. Well, no, he didn't want to do it without me. And I kept telling him, you know, I am fine with it. Go ahead, and I will be fine at home. You can go and just, you know, enjoy your time with them. And so he ended up not going. Well, it was a good thing because on their way home, there was a very tragic accident. And so they, he and his wife, unfortunately did not make it. So after that, we vowed that we would never, ever ride again. And I'm not going to go through all the details because I don't want to upset anybody and I don't want to relive it. And it has been oh gosh, 30 years at least, I guess, but it still feels fresh sometimes. So I have told my kids time and time, you know, they were such special people and he knew more safety than anybody else, knew things to do, but he didn't even know that this other person was coming at him. So it was just awful. And we went, we sold my ex-husband's bike and that was it for us. He said, I'm never riding it again. Didn't even want to look at it. He had someone come and get it. We had, we sold it. And that was the end of that one. It was just something that, you know, and it was just a fluke accident, but it was there. And so we just decided, nope, not ever going to do this again. And then especially when we were talking about having kids and I just couldn't, I didn't want to put my kids through that. So anyway, yes, I have, and no, I will not anymore. Um, never have I ever lost a bet. I have never gambled with like money or 
you know, anything like that, a lot of times we'll just say, I'll bet you, you know, $5 or I'll bet you a Coke or whatever. We never pay the $5. Um, but yeah, of course. Um, and especially with my husband, he'll say, I'll bet you a hundred thousand dollars that this happens and I can prove it, you know, or just something silly. And I'm like, okay, fine. So yeah, but, and I've lost many a bet, but never had to pay out. And it was just mainly, it was for him. So Dave and I are always clowning around and doing stuff like that. Or, you know, I bet that you can't do this and I can. Or, you know, he already knew that he could do something and he already knew there's no way I could do it. So, of course, I won't back down. I am like that. So, the next one is... Never have I ever gotten lost alone in a foreign country. Nope, I sure have not. I have been to one foreign country. Well, I have been to more, but those were just on, you know, a cruise. And I don't really count that because we were, we would get off the boat and we would, you know, off the ship and then we'd get right back on. So I don't really count that. But the main country, the only country that I have been in and walked around and actually spent time there was Japan. When we went to Japan, we actually were with two interpreters. We were with a group of people and they were, we were always together. So no, I did not get lost, thank goodness. But our Japan trip was absolutely amazing. We were very lucky because my husband won a trip and through his job because of he was the highest in sales for a particular period. And so Samsung paid for this trip to Japan. And this was back in the 90s. It was before my daughter was born and she was born in the late 90s. It was like 94, 95, I think, when we went. And it was very expensive. For each of us, it was around 30000 I think, and that was in the 90s. So I can just imagine how much that trip would be now. But we stayed in all first class places. We flew first class. Everything they did was just top notch. The food, we didn't pay for anything. Now, if we wanted, you know, some souvenirs or things like that, extra food or whatever, yeah, we had to pay for it, but we didn't pay for much. And definitely did not get lost because neither one of us could speak any Japanese whatsoever but we were always with someone. So nope, did not get lost. Um, but if I were to go to a foreign country and it were just me, yeah, I would get lost because I get lost very, very easy. It is not a fun thing, but I do. I get lost very easy. Even in my hometown, I get lost really easy. So without GPS, I would be in terrible trouble. And sometimes even with GPS, I get lost. It's like, how is that absolutely possible? But it is. It most certainly is that I can get lost in my own town. Let me see. Where am I? That's going to be nine. And I have to drive my student and I downtown tomorrow. And I had to drive to another location in Georgia, which was only like 40 minutes from my house or so. And she was supposed to be, she was, I was going to be driving and we had GPS and she was supposed to help me navigate. Well, it took us absolutely forever. We got lost. So I'm hoping we don't get lost downtown because there are so, so many one-way streets. And my husband knows downtown very well. 
So if I get lost, I will just have to call him and tell him, you know, look, I'm lost. And the first thing he's going to say is what most people would normally say, where are you? And of course, my response is going to be, what? I don't know. I don't know where I am. I just know it doesn't look very good. I know I missed my turn. And then he'll say, well, what's around you? So then I'll have to look around and tell him. And then he will eventually be able to figure out where we are. But I am going to go really slow. I am not going to miss my turn. I sort of kind of know where I'm going because I used to work downtown. But it has been many, many, many years ago. And I don't know if I'll remember, to be honest. So I know I could easily get lost in a foreign country because I can get lost in my own country, in my own backyard, pretty much. I was not born with a sense of direction whatsoever. The only one per the only person that I know that is worse than me is my was my mother. My mother could not give directions. I mean, her giving directions was really, really bad. But her trying to follow directions, uh-uh. You can forget that. She could never ever follow directions. And so my oldest daughter is about as bad as I am. She is starting to branch out a little bit more. So now that she's moved, she doesn't have a choice. When she was here, she would call me. She'd want me to go you know, somewhere with her. So I did. And then you know, I tried to help her the best that I could. But now that she has moved, she is having to navigate on her own. And sometimes she'll call me and she'll tell me, I can't find so-and-so. And I'm like, well, I'm sorry because I have no idea. I know I have absolutely nothing about South Dakota. Let's see. Let me get another color and see. Um, Another one. Never have I ever bribed someone. Well, um, with that question, do kids count? Because, yeah, I'll be honest, I bribe my kids. Especially when they were little. It's like, okay, I will let you stay up 10 minutes longer. That sounded like a really long time to them. I'll let you stay up 10 minutes longer if you will just let me sit here in peace. You do not ask me for anything. You do not bother me. Just let me sit here. And then I will let you stay up just 10 minutes longer. And they thought that was the best thing because they could stay up a whole 10 minutes longer. Or sometimes, especially when they were little and they couldn't read a clock, and they even if they saw a digital clock, they wouldn't know what it was. They would want to stay up until midnight. And I'm like, okay, you can stay up until midnight if you're really, really super good. Well, then about 9.30, I'm like, oh, it's midnight. It's, it's time to celebrate, time to go to bed. And so that wasn't exactly a bribe, but I told him, if you're really good, you can stay up. So I guess that in a way it was. And then I kind of bribed them to go to bed. So I guess I'm a terrible mother. I wonder if we all do that. I never bribed my family or anything. Didn't bribe my sister. Um, number nine is, never have I ever gone skinny dipping. Nope, can't say that I ever have, and we owned a pool. My husband and I owned a pool. We had um, really, you know, high fencing, and I never did it there either. And we would go out sometimes late at night when everybody was asleep, and we would just swim. But nope, never have. And I can't say if he has or hadn't. I don't know, and I don't know if I want to ask him. Um... Let's see. The next one. Never have I ever cheated on someone. Nope, I've never cheated on someone. Have I ever cheated when I was playing a game or something like that? Nope, never have done that either. As I said, guys, I am so honest. It is just to the point of fault that I'm so honest. If I do something wrong, I'm definitely going to say, I'm going to apologize profusely, and somebody will say, don't tell anybody. Well, you know, I'm going to be the first one that goes and rats us all out. 
Not really. If I was if I was younger, I might have, but I wouldn't do that now. If somebody says don't say something, I'm not going to, but I'm not going to do something wrong and then feel guilty and not say anything. All righty. So what do you guys think about these Never Have I Ever? So have you done any of this? I am just really curious. And I think these are kind of fun. I really wanted to go through some of the comments, but I wasn't sure if I would have enough comments or if, because that one always takes a lot of time. And I thought, well, this will be less time. And so I can do this. Let's see. This one is going to be that one. There's a lot of these too. I'm wondering what this is going to end up being on this section because, hmm, of these dark colors, I don't know. And I'm really enjoying this because this to me is like a mystery, but you can see it, even though I know what it's going to look like in the end, but it's really cool as it's coming together. I'm really loving this. Even though I don't work on it as much, it's not because I don't want to work on this. It's just the fact that I just have too many whips going. I just really need to do something about that. Now it's going to be here. And that is my plan. I do want to work on some of my whips and just try to get some of these done. And I think what I'll do is towards the end of the year, I will pull all the ones out that I've just put in a closet and thought, well, I'll go back to some time because they're so large. And I think I'll do that. And then I will, oh my gosh, where am I? Here's the red one. Let's see, that one goes here. Okay. I think I'll do that and show you guys what I have. And then I may even have you vote on it but it's not going to be until close to the end of the year. I want to see what I can get done. And I'm thinking about once I get to a good point that I would like to go ahead and put it out there of what I want to work on and just see how that goes. And my cat just jumped up here. That one goes... That goes here. Okay. Yes, Salem just jumped up here. So you may see my cat. Um, it just drives her crazy if I am over here. She knows I'm doing something, and so she has to be right in the middle of everything. All right, the next one is 9.39. Okay, the next question is, never have I ever sang karaoke. Yes, I have sang karaoke. I kind of enjoyed it. I did sing karaoke the night before we got married. My sister and a friend of hers and then two friends of mine were spending the night. We had hotel rooms and we were staying in Gatlinburg. And so we went to a bar and she, my, her, my sister's friend got us all up on stage and we sang karaoke. It was very embarrassing, very humiliating on top of that. And I'm like, nope, I won't do it again. It was not my thing. I know a lot of people like karaoke, but I just, I can't sing for one thing. And let's get my other set. I cannot sing worth anything. And then I don't like to be like the center of attention. And I felt like with karaoke, I definitely was. So that's just not something that I enjoy. Um... Never have I ever broken a bone. No, I have not broken a bone. I have had to have a cast when I was younger. 
but that was due to surgery, but it was not due to a broken bone. Now I say that, and I better be careful when I go outside. Um, <laughs> let's see. The next one is, never have I ever lived alone. I, well, I lived with my kids, so I guess I did not, I guess I never have lived alone um, because I lived with my parents, then I went to college and lived with four roommates in college. We had a really good dorm because we had our own bedroom, we had our own locks, and we just shared like a common area, which was a living room. And then we also shared a little mini kitchen. So that was really nice. But it was nice that if I wanted to go into my room and get away, I was easily able to do that because nobody else could go in there. And then from there, after, as soon as I left college, I got married. And so, of course, we were living together. And then from there, the only other time that I lived alone was when we were separated and then divorced. And so my kids lived with me. And then that's really it. So, nope, I never have lived alone. So that's a good question. Never having really thought about it, to be honest. But nope, I have not lived alone. That's kind of cool, I guess, to be as old as I am and never have lived alone. Um, and really, my oldest daughter has never lived alone. She's either had roommates or she has lived with me. Let me see, what else do I need here? That's already done. This one goes here. I'm plowing through these. I like that. That's a two, so that goes there. Let me see what else. That one. All right. Let's look at the next one. Um, never have I ever been on a yacht. I've been on a yacht. Um, gosh, a lot of these are, yes, I have. I don't know if that's good or not. I worked for a national home builder and the owner had a yacht, and so we would have our annual parties on his yacht. 966 or 9, yeah, 966, let me, which way is this going? 960, 966, okay. And he would have our annual parties on his yacht. He um, had a captain and he would take us out to the middle of the lake and anybody you know that wanted to ride um he had a couple of other little things we could do he had other boats that you could he would let us take out so that was a lot of fun if we wanted to he had some jet skis he let everybody use and we would just spend a day Anybody that wanted to swim in the lake or do anything like that, we were able to. So, yeah, I have been, and it was really nice. That was the only reason why I've been on a yacht, and we didn't spend the night or anything like that, but the, he did have a couple of rooms where he would take his family and spend the night quite often. But, nope, that's the only time, and that was, I was there for four years, so I went three times. Um, let's see. Um, never have I ever been on TV. Hmm. Nope, don't think I have. Um, never have I ever been on a blind date. Yes, I have been on a blind date. Um, when I met my now husband... I had never really dated anybody because I had only been with my ex-husband. And so I met him online. And 
I'm trying to figure out where I am now. Right there. Okay. I met him through a dating app or a dating service, I guess. And so I think we did it right because we talked for almost a month just, you know, on the phone and getting to know each other. And then we decided to meet. And so that would be a blind date because I didn't know him before then. But once we went on our first date, it was like we had really known each other for a long time because we had been talking for so long. And we were both older. We'd both been married before. We didn't want to just jump into anything. He had dated some people that he had met online, and he said they were just wackos. And so, you know, he was being really careful. I was being super careful. I had met some other people online and um, some other guys, and I'm like, oh, no, if this is what this is like, then nope, I am definitely not interested in this. But then it all worked out. So we've been together, it will be 12 years, which is hard to believe, 12 years this Sunday. And I will not be home. So he has been really good about that. He has not complained. He says, you know, it's work. It's not like you're going and, and you're going somewhere without me. You know, it's, I totally get it. You have to do it because of work. But I just hate that we're not going to be together for our anniversary. But we'll have other anniversaries. And I love my job, so, and I want to be there for my student. I'm sure if I really could not do it on Sunday, I could ask. My boss would come in and take over for me, but I'm not doing that. It's all good. So, yeah, I have gone on a blind date. And let me tell you, after I had been married for so long, had dated the same person, it was like, slap me in the face. I had no idea what I was doing. Both my kids, my oldest daughter was like 14, so of course she couldn't help me. She was trying to give me all this advice. And I'm like, whoa, 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 wait a minute. How do you know these things? You shouldn't be talking to me about some of these things you're talking about. And of course, she said, you know, I hear it from school. And then I really started getting nervous. And she was going to a small private school. And I thought, oh, I don't know. I'm not ready for this kind of stuff. Let's see. Now, 3328. Maybe I'm giving you, is this just 2, two TMI? I hope not. Um, let me see. The next one is, never have I ever lied to law enforcement. No, that's one thing I can definitely say I have never, ever done. I have never lied to law enforcement. All right, let me figure out where I am here, and then I can go to the next one. Some of these on the ones I haven't done, they go really quick because, you know, the answer is no. Um, let's see, we're on two, which starts here. Oh, it's all the way down. That's good. That's going to start where? That is the top. This one. I have to remember where I am here. Okay, this one. Oh, it's all of those. Okay, that's going to be easy. All right, the next one is, never have I ever gotten a tattoo. Well, yes, I have. I've gotten a tattoo. I actually have three now. I was, my daughter, my oldest daughter, loves tattoos. I mean, I don't know how many she has. She doesn't have a sleeve or anything like that, which definitely is a good thing. Um, but she has, I need to ask her how many. I'm really curious now. Um, I will ask her how many that she has. I don't know, she may not even tell me. But Anyway, um, let's see, there's purple, skip to, okay, that's good. So, my daughter, as I mentioned, she loves tattoos, and she 
is she does not have a high tolerance rate of being sick or anything. So when she said she was getting a tattoo, I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. You're really going to do this? And the first one, she said it hurt a little bit, but it wasn't that bad. And then after she'd gotten her first one, she had gotten the itch. You know, she wanted to get more. And a lot, some of hers are hidden. Some of hers are hidden. But anyway, I was, let's see, how old am I now? I got a tattoo right before I turned 50. And I got one with her. She kept asking me, you know, will you get a tattoo with me? I really want you. I think you'll like it. And I never had any interest whatsoever in a tattoo. I always said no. I would never have one of those. I thought they looked awful. And it just, you know, wasn't for me. Was not interested. And so, for some reason, she just started, she kind of taught me into it. Not really even taught me into it. She's like, I think you would like it. I think we ought to go together. And I'll be there with you. And you can get a tattoo. So the more I thought about it, I thought, you know what? I think I want one. And the only reason why I think that I started thinking about it is I like to be unique. I don't want to be like stand out of the crowd unique, you know, purple hair, anything like that unique. Nothing's wrong with purple hair. I would actually wouldn't mind it so much, I don't think. But no, I am not I, just, I couldn't pull it off. Let's just put it that way. If I could pull something like that off, I might do it. Who knows? 37, 20, so I'm way over here. So anyway, I, I like to, you know, um, and I thought, well, you know what? I think I'll get a tattoo. I'm going to get something that's small and that's hidden. And if I don't like it, at least it'll be hidden. Nobody will ever know. Well, it's not hidden because it is on my wrist. So that part didn't work out so well for me. But I, I got it. It was larger than what I thought it was going to be. And I kept looking at it and I kept thinking, what have I done? I don't know what I've done. I don't know if I'm going to like this. And now it's too late. And then after about two weeks of my owl tattoo, I really started liking it. And then about two years after that, I think close to maybe three years possibly, I told my daughter, I said, you know what? I This was right after the pandemic. I started thinking about it. I thought, you know what? I kind of want to get another tattoo. And it just hit me all of a sudden. And I said I was just going to get the one. I was going to be happy with one. And so I ended up getting another one. And that one was on my ankle. And the first one I can say on my wrist, it honestly did not hurt that bad until they got to like the end of my wrist. The arm didn't bother me, but the wrist did. It, it really hurt, but not for just a horrible amount of time. I was able to handle it. I have an incredible high tolerance for pain, and so I don't know if that's good or bad. I guess it's good, but I do have that tolerance. So, anyway, I got the one on my ankle, and that one, it's a special one. It's very special to me. It, my dog that I absolutely loved, I had a collie, and she was older. She had gotten really frail, and so we knew it was about time. And we were going to take her to the vet, say bye to her. We had all of that planned, and the night before, she decided that she was going to cross the Rainbow Bridge on her own. And so she did. Well, I decided that I loved her so much and I wanted something to show how much that I loved her and that she was always with me because she was with me through some really bad times, really difficult times, and when with the kids too. So I ended up when we we had her cremated and they sent me a paw print of hers. 
So I went ahead and I copied the paw print and that's what I ended up getting on my ankle. And to me, it doesn't look like a paw print and it is, I wanted it kind of rainbowish color, um, really not real colorful, but kind of um, a rainbow, kind of a washed muted color. And I think it needs some work, but that one hurt so bad that I don't know if I will get that one ever done again. I might, but I would like to just have something done to it. I think it needs to be outlined or something. And I spoke to, I had a different person that did that one than my other two. And so he said, I know who the person is that did it. He said, normally I wouldn't go behind somebody. He said, but I know her. And he said, I'll talk to her. We're friends. And I'll just ask her, is it okay if I just enhance it a little bit more on something that you want different? And so he talked to her. She said it was fine, but I still hadn't gone to do it because it hurt so bad. I didn't think I was going to be able to get that one finished. And most of the time it's covered, so I don't really worry about that one. Then I did get a third one, and that one's on my other wrist. And I just wanted butterflies circling around, and that's and that's what it, it, it is. It's butterflies are just circling around my wrist. And then he put something that was supposed to look like vines. I don't really like how it came out. And we I had been there for so long because he also put a hat on my owl. That's on my other wrist. Um, originally did not have a hat. And so he took forever on that because he couldn't decide what hat he wanted and the way that he wanted to do it. So... That just took so long. I was just doing. I'm like, I'll just have to come back and we'll, we can finish up on my wrist if I decide that I want it changed a little bit. And so that's now been a little while. So I might go back and do something with that. More than likely, I probably will just because um, that I think that it needs to be done. But I love my owl. It is the first one. It is my favorite. And I get more compliments on that one. And that one he drew himself. So it is not like anybody else's unless someone found it and they're copycatting. Which I like that because I wanted something. I'm like, I don't want something that everyone else has. I don't want just your typical rose or anything like that. I want something different. And so he's like, I gotcha. I know exactly what I'm going to do for you. And I said, I want an owl. And that's all I told him. So right now she is a very sassy owl. She's like a biker owl because she has a feather. But yes, long story there. But yes, I do have tattoos. I don't have a problem with tattoos. I wouldn't even mind getting another one. But now I think, gosh, I'm too old. I'm just getting too old to have tattoos. But my daughter says, yep, you're the cool mom. None of my other friends' moms would get tattoos. You're the cool one. I'm like, well, I don't know if I'd go that far. But... I would be open to getting another one. I don't know what I would get. And my daughter would be all excited if she heard this. She doesn't always listen to my channel. But when she does, then she'll come to me and she'll say, Okay, you said you wouldn't mind another one, so let's go. And she always likes to go with me because I always pay for hers. But besides that, she thinks it's fun, you know, to get a tattoo with her mother. And I thought maybe someday we will get matching tattoos. But I don't know. She likes a lot of the, the manga and the anime and stuff. And I don't. So I don't know what we could get that we would both be happy with. I'm not exactly sure. Where is $37.99? $37.99. There it is. Okay. So very long story on that one. But yes, I have tattoos and I love them. Um, never have I ever used a fake ID. Nope, never have. Never really needed to use a fake ID. That is all of the ones that I have. So I am really curious if any of you guys have done any of these things that I've said. I am really curious. Or am I the only one out there that's done more? 
Let's see, that one goes here. What goes, this one goes over. I really need to take this plastic off and just use some release paper for some of this. I think that would be the best thing to do. I have ordered some paper from Crafts with Crashly, who has the paper, the release paper that has, you know, designs and things on there. I've never purchased from her before. She is going to be at the retreat. So I'm going to try that out. I don't use release paper that often, but I would like to have some release paper for this. So that way I can take some of this off and not just take the plastic off as I get to it, but just maybe have a few on here. So all I have to do is just take the release paper off and then from there, I can just go ahead and count my little sections. I'm going to start in August on a Cheryl Baker. And guys, I don't know. I have almost all of the, I think I have all of the Cheryl Bakers that are out there for diamond painting that I know of. Diamond Art Club came out with a new one last week that was called, I think, Three Sisters. And that one reminds me of, oh shoot, what is that show called? Hocus Pocus. I don't know if that's what it is or not, but it really reminds me of the sisters on Hocus Pocus, which I think is really cool. So I had to get it because I just love Cheryl Baker. And then I just noticed that Diamond Art Club is coming out with another one that is a pumpkin. And that one kind of reminds me of the pumpkin herder from last year. And that one's coming out on Saturday. And I said I wasn't going to buy anything. I did break down. I bought the Cheryl Baker because I didn't know if it was going to be a limited release. And I figured it wouldn't be a limited release. But I didn't know. And I hate to have all of them and then missing a few. So I did buy that one. I had, that's the only thing I bought in June. So for me, that's pretty good. That's really good for me, actually. Not pretty good. It is good. 372. So I don't know if I'm going to go ahead and get the next one. Um, I might. I don't know. I'm not a hundred percent sure if I'm gonna get it or not. It depends on what I'm doing Saturday, if I am judging. I still have not gotten all of my schedule yet, so I don't know what I'm gonna be doing when except for tomorrow for work. Other than that, I don't know what my schedule is, so I will, I'll see. But I would hate not to get the Cheryl Baker, and I do have plenty of points where I could get that one and not spend any money. So I may do that, because I'm not spending money, but I'm using points. But then I'm thinking... So I want to save those points because I know that there will be something that comes up for Black Friday that I'm probably going to want. More than likely, there will be something. And I'm trying not to buy anything from Diamond Art Club until then. But I don't know. I just, I don't know. And then, I don't know what I'm going to be working on in August for Cheryl Baker. July is going to be Jasmine Beckett Griffith. And I love her, but I have done most of my diamond paintings that is by her. I do have some because she um, has a lot of her work now in the public domain that I have from the discount companies. And so it's not copyrighted because she has it out there. So I might do one of those because it is small. I would like to participate. I don't participate for prizes or anything. So I could do a discount company and get away with it. And it's not unlicensed. So I might do one of those just to see what it looks like and compare it to one of the ones I've already done. 
and I may have a craftably, a JBG craftably that I could do. I'm pretty sure I do. I think I have one that's a flower or something because I did one last year and there was another one that was very similar to that one that had come out that I think I had gotten. So I, I'm May and July. It really just depends. I don't know if I want to start on another one. Depends on how many of the smaller ones I've gotten done. All right, so I have finished this little square here, this little area. I've now done 200 stitches today. I'm at 8,612 out of 75,400. That sounds like a lot of diamonds, 75,400. But I guess in the grand scheme of things, it's probably not as much as I think it is. That takes me up to 11.42. My goal is to have 20%. My computer just went crazy. And my goal is to have 20% completed by the end of the year. So if anything, I will make the 20%. I'm hoping, of course, to do more and we'll see. But let me show you how much I have gotten done. And the present me has to finish getting ready to take things for my work for tomorrow. And the future me is hoping that I am having a good time. And by now, my student will have already competed. So the future me is hoping that she does, or she did very well, and we will see. That to me, I still can't tell what any of this is looking like. What do you guys think? I still can't. That looks like flowers, and that's what it's supposed to be. Let me show you. Oh, I don't have, I wouldn't be able to blow it up, and I'm not, I'm not supposed to show Pattern Keeper, but I'm loving the colors, if anything. I still have a good ways to go to get to the end here. So I'm doing two right now, going all the way across, and then once I get there, I'll come back where I did all of this and just go across until I get all the way down to the end, and then I am finished. We do have some drills here that are missing. That's interesting. Okay, I hope they didn't just fall off. But that is looking really good. I'm really pleased with that. I hope that you enjoyed this video, and if you did, please give it a thumbs up. That definitely helps with getting my videos out there. And if you haven't subscribed, please consider doing so. I have this type of videos. I've been doing them on Saturdays, and I'm gonna keep doing them as long as everyone is enjoying them, or until I get this finished, which that could be years. But um, we'll see. Um, I am not 100% certain if you will have this video next Saturday, or something else, but there will be something there for you. And then I do have other types of videos throughout the week. Thanks so much for joining me and keeping me company while I finished a couple more of these squares. And until next time, happy diamond painting. Bye.